Hi, how are you today? The improved package has arrived. We're having it fitted in time for FP1. Have a look at the factory report. Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for me to welcome you back to episode number 5 of our F1 2016 career mode here with Renault. In the background you can see uh, a moment ago you heard that Chris, our R&D guy, has confirmed that a new part has been fitted and is an upgrade in terms of engine power and our power unit. Before we get into this video properly, I just want to say uh, I apologise for how little there has been in terms of uploads on this channel recently. For those that don't know, I was away at Leeds Festival recently for the weekend, so I wasn't able to, of course, uh, sort of make videos during that time. I had to try and schedule some for beforehand, but unfortunately I was unable to get as many done as I would have hoped because I wanted to make them really good, as opposed to just getting a crap ton of them out, but they're rubbish. I wanted to put quality over quantity for you guys. But in the background a moment ago, as we get into to this round number five of the 2016 season you can see that that upgrade actually to our power unit means that we are technically above Haas and Force India although it's very close between ourselves and Force India but at a power hungry track like Spain the circuit to Catalonia it is probably likely that Force India will still perform better than us here. Uh, in the background you can see some track acclimatization being done. Our first lap got us a green score, so we now have to go ahead and try and get a purple one. A lot of oversteer coming out of this final corner because as you can see in the background it is raining. Only light rain, so we are on the intermediate tyres. But uh, the weather in practice made it very difficult to complete all the other objectives when it came to, uh, to programmes, so when it comes to practice programmes. Team objectives, we managed to get I think three of those five done. Um, but regrettably, we didn't do very well in terms of uh, of the actual practice program. So we only managed to do one perfectly, which was a massive shame because we need some resource points, obviously, to improve the car further into further Grand Prix and uh, make sure that we get some research and development done. Uh, in the background, we've got a call there from our agent, just uh, sort of spelling out our qualifying goals. And the team Renault wanted us to finish, I didn't even see actually, I think it was 16th or higher in qualifying. Obviously beat our rival Esteban Gutierrez and beat our teammate Kevin Magnussen. So now to see whether we can accomplish those objectives, it's time to get into the qualifying report. Qualifying saw torrential rain throughout, but the near flood conditions didn't stop Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes from going fastest. F1's newest team Haas were dealt a slice of reality with both cars going out, whilst Felipe Nasa and Kevin Magnussen made it into Q2. The second session of the day saw Lewis Hamilton fastest once again, this time from teammate Nico Rosberg. The wet conditions seemed to suit McLaren, as they both made it into the shootout, whilst both Williams cars will start outside of the top 10. A hat-trick was completed in Q3, however, as Lewis Hamilton was fastest, taking pole ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Nico Rosberg would have to settle for fourth, whilst Toro Rosso and Daniel Cafiat will start in a solid sixth. So the grid for the Spanish Grand Prix looks like this. It's Lewis Hamilton on pole with Daniel Ricciardo alongside him on the front row. Sebastian Vettel took P3 ahead of Nico Rosberg in fourth, whilst it's Kimi Räikkönen and Daniel Cafiat sharing row three. Max Verstappen will start in 7th ahead of home favourite Carlos Sainz, with both the McLarens of Jensen Button and Fernando Alonso on row 5. Felipe Massa will start P11, with Nico Hülkenberg in 12th. So then not the greatest of qualifying sessions, was of course hoping for better and we of course missed out on our objectives of beating I think everyone. I think we missed out on beating Gutierrez, we missed out on our session goal and we of course missed out on beating Kevin Magnussen as well. In terms of the driver position you can see that we've gone down from a solid 10 to 8. Of course we are still overachieving in the eyes of the team but it's not quite as stable as it was before. Obviously very very wet in qualifying but you can see in the background it's very very dry for the race. I won't lie to you, I set a banker lap and then accidentally retired from the session. I was meant to return to the garage but the pause menu screwed me over a little bit and I accidentally retired to the session. We probably could have got into Q2. I wouldn't have thought that we could have got you know much higher than sort of 14th or 15th so it's a little bit frustrating um, but it hasn't exactly sort of cost us a chance of pole or anything like that. You can see there Carlos Sainz of course he's a home favourite from Spain here in Catalonia. Uh, well, he's not, I don't know if he's from Catalonia, but he's of course from Spain, and uh, he'll be hoping to send the home crowd happy along with Fernando Alonso as well. In the background, we're aiming for a one-stop strategy. We are starting on the medium tyres. Obviously, everyone in the top 10, or the majority of people in the top 10, have to start on the yellow wall soft tyres. They are, of course, the softest compound for this weekend, so the majority of those guys will have to do a two-stop strategy. So, it would seem as though we have been dealt the better strategy when it comes to the, uh, the amount of pit stops we have to do 
in this race. So uh, we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Obviously, those strategies will merge at some point during the race. The people on uh, quicker tyres but doing more pit stops will, of course, merge with people like myself on the slower tyres, but of course doing less pit stops. We line up then in 17th place, directly in front of us is Kevin Magnussen, to our right is Felipe Nazza, and behind us is the other Sauber of Marcus Ericsson, but the lights are now starting to illuminate here for the Spanish Grand Prix. Five lights are now on, and they are now off for round number five of the 2016 season, and we've got a pretty decent start here. Uh, Kevin Magnussen as well has got a good start in the other Renault. We've got Felipe Nazza though to our right-hand side. He's still up the inside of us down into turn one, and Sergio Perez quite cautious there on the brakes. That's allowed his teammate Nico Hulkenberg to get up the inside of him into P12. We've still got Nazza to our right-hand side, but through turn two, we hold on to the position. That's one position gained then from our starting place on the grid. There's an incident though through turn three. Massive accident there. Two of the Williams cars, both in the gravel, and the McLaren of Jensen Button, the safety car, and surprisingly, is instantly out. We've got three illegal overtakes. We're going to have to let both the Force Indias through and our teammate Kevin Magnussen, who managed to get past Sergio Perez during that melee of a start. But a massive accident and a dismal season for the two Williams cars continues. Valtteri Bottas out of the race on the spot. He is out. DNF for him on the first lap. Ke uh, Kevin Magnussen, what am I about? Felipe Massa was also involved in Jensen Button, I think was the instigator. We see round turn three, he gets hit by a Toro Rosso and comes back onto the track and smacks into both of the Williams cars. Valtteri Bottas's wheel is taken off. Massa is actually collected there by his rear tyre. He's thrown into the gravel trap after being hit by the front wing of Jensen Button. And this is what it looked like on board from Valtteri Bottas. Yeah, there's contact between, I think, Carlos Sainz and Jensen Button, it puts Jensen Button back onto the racing line. He smacks into Valtteri Bottas. That rips his wheel off and sends uh, Felipe Massa into the wall. Uh, not too much, I, th I don't think, in terms of bad news really for Felipe Massa. He's lost a lot of track position, but he'll, of course, been able to just replace his front wing under the safety car. Uh, for us, though, it means a gain of three positions. Obviously, both the Williams cars and Jensen Button ending up in the gravel trap after that very extravagant and very dramatic crash there on lap one. On to lap three, and the safety car is in. We've clobbered one of the sausage curbs. It's the first time we've had to do it at racing speed here on the Sunday, and we've got it a bit wrong, and it's allowed Sergio Perez to get up the road a little bit in that Force India. Obviously, we've got to compare ourselves, really, to Force India in this Grand Prix and in the next one as well in Monaco because our cars are basically level when it comes to the vehicle comparison chart. At the moment, we're pretty much level. Magnussen sits in between the two Force Indias and we sit just behind. But at the moment, I think that's about to change because onto lap six, Sergio Perez is going up the inside of our teammate, Kevin Magnussen, who for finally is looking like he can challenge us and, of course, score some points as well. Up in P12, we've got yellow flags, though, again through turn three. There's a gravel cloud and it's been created by Kimi Raikkonen in the Ferrari, who sits to the outside of the track, and that is another position gained, thanks to yet another incident. We'll see now on a replay what on earth happened to the Iceman, Kimi Raikkonen. Well, it's his teammate Sebastian Vettel, and I think it's Nico Rosberg battling in front of him, going through the first few corners into turn three. Vettel goes wide, Raikkonen looks up the inside and hits him and spins off into the gravel and off into the runoff area and he's now got to allow everyone through every single car you could see both of the Renault cars going through there myself and our teammate Magnussen on to lap seven we've got a wonderful battle here going on for P4 is Daniel Kafiat battling here with Daniel Ricciardo through turn three and it's a spin again this corner is causing absolute havoc and poor Daniel Kafiat who was up in P4 battling for, you know, the heights of, w of wonderful places in the points. But he's now way down at the back of the field with Kimi Räikkönen. And you can see us just driving past the incident there. And uh, actually, we I've just realised I completely forgot to edit this in. We actually managed to pass Kevin Magnussen uh, during that accident as well. So we are now ahead of him. Uh, I do apologise for that. Yeah, we managed to pass Kevin Magnussen down the DRS straight, but Kevin, it doesn't really matter too much because now Magnussen is going back through again. Uh, a lot of the people who are doing two stoppers there have pitted, so that's why myself and Magnussen are now P3 and P4. And uh, P1 and P2 are the two Force Indias. So that's Hulkenberg, who's leading, and Sergio Perez, 
who is in second place. Those guys also trying to go for a one-stopper. On to lap number 13, and we are coming in for our one, and hopefully only pit stop just about getting slowed down for the 50 miles per hour speed limit. Nico Hulkenberg, you can see in front of us, and the Force India has pitted as well. We, however, though, have got the undercut, actually, on our teammate, Kevin Magnussen. If we are to score points in this one, I think we're going to have to beat Magnussen, realistically. I think we're both going to be fighting for P10 um, in this one, unless there's more instance going on in front of us. I think Perez and Hulkenberg are well-placed for some very good points in this one, but I think myself and Magnussen are struggling to keep up with them uh, due to the nature of the track, really. Uh, despite that uh, that engine upgrade, our car is a lot slower in a straight line, and obviously that long homes, that very long home straight and the long back straight means a significant deficit in comparison to the Mercedes-powered cars. But uh, onto the next lap after we've pitted, Kimi Raikkonen got out just in front of us, and Magnussen has got out just in front of us as well. Now onto lap 15, but it's very close between us, and we go right around the outside of Kevin Magnussen, the undercut working an absolute treat there against the Dane, our teammate, and we are up now into P12. A few guys still left to pit, so a few people are a little bit out of sync still, as you can see on to lap number 16, we are now up into P10, but it's actually Nico Rosberg there coming out of the pit lane, not entirely sure why he's pitted again, but now it's time for the two stoppers, like we knew these strategies were going were gonna to merge at some point during this race, Daniel Kafiat, he's already pitted and he's on the quicker tyres, he just about gets past us, behind now is Lewis Hamilton who's stuck on another set of softs, so he's actually going to have to do a three stopper in this race, not entirely sure why Mercedes have gone for that strategy, but Hamilton's going to be attacking us as well as we go on to the next DRS straight. And there is a train of other cars behind us as well. Kevin Magnussen is being sort of engulfed as well by the two stoppers. Lewis Hamilton trying to get up the inside of us, actually down into this chicane. We're going to battle with him. We might as well. Round the outside there. We're on the hard tyres, obviously, the orange-walled hard tyres, and he's on the soft, so he should be, you know, so, I mean, he's in a much better car than us, and he's on a set of tyres that are two compounds softer than ours, so he should be about four seconds a lap quicker. He is going to breeze through, though, round the outside, uh, down the home straight. Felipe Massa actually coming out of the pit lane there as well. Down into turn one, Lewis Hamilton gets the job done. Kevin Magnussen actually thinking of a move around the outside of us there. That actually got very, very close. It is nice to see Magnussen, though, challenging us at the moment, and it's nice to see a lot of battles going on in our race, but also in the race of others as well, and I mentioned the Force Indias, they're in wonderful positions at the moment, Sergio Perez holding on to P3, but at the moment he's under threat from the, for that P3, because Max Verstappen in the Red Bull is going up the inside of him there, down into the hairpin at the end of the second DRS zone on this track, and that is Max Verstappen up on to the podium now behind Seb Vettel and Daniel Ricciardo because the two Mercedes are well out of position. Another battle going, out on, going on sorry, out on track. This is the other Force India now of Hulkenberg. Obviously, again, on the slower tyres, much like us, he's being engulfed by the guys on the two-stop strategy. That is Carlos Sainz and the Toro Rosso going past him. And the other Toro Rosso of Daniel Kafia after his spin on uh, lap six there at turn three. He's actually making a double overtake down into turn one. Wonderful stuff going past Esteban Gutierrez. Uh, actually, no, sorry, Roman Grosjean and the Sauber, I think, of Felipe Nazza as well. So wonderful stuff from Kafia. He's obviously on the comeback trail. On to lap 23. We've actually managed to hold some of these guys behind us for quite some time. It's, it's really worth holding these guys behind us because if they have to pit again, we might actually be able to beat them in the race. Felipe Massa managed to go right around the outside of us, but it got very, very close there down into turn one there at the end of the start of the lap. Now go to, cutting towards the end of the lap and we've outbroken ourselves there on board with Fernando Alonso. He's on a two-stop strategy as well and he's following Felipe Massa past us because we actually tapped the back end of Massa. Uh, the Brazilian very lucky actually they're not to spin and we were very lucky they're not to spin or damage our car whatsoever. So Felipe Massa and Fernando Alonso, they're both on two-stop strategies. They've managed to get past us. Alonso actually is on the medium tyres, whereas Massa is on the hard tyres. So maybe Massa's converted to a one-stop. I'm not entirely sure, but whatever the circumstance, Fernando Alonso is bearing down on him as well. But of course, he's got that Honda power unit. Is he going to go for the move on Felipe Massa? He is actually going to. We've got DRS from both of them, and Nico Rosberg is unable to get past us, therefore, and Alonso has managed to get past Felipe Massa. The theoretically slowest car in a straight line on the grid, managing to pass the theoretically quickest car on the grid. So that's wonderful stuff there from Fernando Alonso. On to lap 24, we've won a little bit wide there, and Rosberg has spun behind us, and he's been collected by the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen, and he's out of the race, and his horror story of a season continues. Nico Rosberg is out of the Spanish Grand Prix here on lap 24, 
And, I mean, we went a little bit wide, but there was no way there was a gap there. Raikkonen has nowhere to go. Slams into him. And uh, there's some more contact as well. We're going to see this on board with Kevin Magnussen, of course, has been following us all race because we're on the same strategy. But he hit Nico Rosberg as well and broke his front wing. And his chance of points in this race have completely gone before his eyes after Nico Rosberg's stupidity on the back end of our car. So that's unfortunate for Magnussen. It looks as if we could grab some points, but that's only if the tyres hold on. Look at the tyre wear gauge and uh, the ridiculous tyre consumption of these Renault cars is striking again. Until lap 29, the front left is already 71% worn. We've got four more laps to go. Surely we've got absolutely no hope of, of doing this whatsoever. Lewis Hamilton has gone past us again. He's on a three-stopper. He's had an absolutely shocking afternoon. And it looks as if he's going to finish at a high in P9. But we now have got to look, out, look over our shoulder to Esteban Gutierrez, who's also on hard tyres. On to lap 31. The front left is now 74% worn. So we've done a little bit of a good job to, uh, to sort of curb that. But on to the final lap of the race. And is 79% worn. There is a huge chance... That we may end up, sorry, may end up getting a puncture at the end of this race. We've been conserving the tyre life so, so much at the end of this race, pretty much all the way through the stint, to the point where Esteban Gutierrez has caught us up by about 10 seconds in the last three or four laps. He shouldn't pass us unless we get a puncture, but it's still a little bit concerning. You can see there that the red alarm light is now on. Sort of the alarm bells are ringing. We could end up with a puncture down the end of the back straight. It looks as if we are holding on, but no, into the hairpin. The front left has given way, like in China, and the puncture curse that plagues Renault has come back to bite us once again. And on the final lap, to deny us a point again, it would be fair, it would have been another P10. I'm completely bored of 10th place finishers. And to top it all off, our rival Esteban Gutierrez, who's been causing us uh, just all manner of pain all the way through the season. We lose the back end and clip Roman Grosjean. Raikkonen's going through. Awful race for him. He's not going to score any points as well. Neither is Daniel Kafia. But on the final lap, it is absolute heartbreak. It would have been P10. But in the end, it is P16. Six cars going past us there. Uh, both the Haas cars. Uh, Kafia, I think Felipe Nazar did as well. Kimi Raikkonen too. There goes one of the manners as well. That's Pascal Verlein in 17th place. But it is a disaster for us. We would have had points. But again, the ridiculous tyre wear of this Renault car is back once again. It's quite incredible how, how much it chews through its tyres. You can see, well done to Sebastian Vettel. He won the Spanish Grand Prix with the two Red Bulls either side of him on the podium. Daniel Ricciardo in second and Max Verstappen there in third. But here is the full classification. Sebastian Vettel wins the race. Daniel Ricciardo in second with Verstappen third. Well done to both the Spaniards. Carlos Sainz, we talked them up at the start of the video in that intro. And they did the job. Sainz in a wonderful fourth and Perez in fifth. And then Alonso in sixth. And then it was Hulkenberg, Massa, Hamilton and Esteban Gutierrez to round out the points. But you can't help but feel it should have been us. It should have been us in P10. Kevin Magnussen ended up way down in P19 after his issues in the Rosberg crash. Nico Rosberg obviously won of two retirements in that race, along with Valtteri Bottas, who went out on lap one. Here is how that race has affected the championship, though, and it's Sebastian Vettel who leads again from Hamilton. Those guys way out in front of P3. That's Daniel Ricciardo. And it's Verstappen, Alonso, Perez, Kafiat, Rosberg all the way down in eighth in the championship. Shocking start to the season for him. Raikkonen way down in P9. Then it's Massa, Sainz, Jensen Button, Valtteri Bottas, Hulkenberg, Grosjean, ourselves, and Esteban Gutierrez, who's the final point scorer in the championship. In terms of the Constructors' Championship, Ferrari have leapfrog Mercedes in that as well. Red Bull in third. Good weekend for them, finally. McLaren Honda still overachieving there in fourth from Toro Rosso, Force India, Williams, Haas, and ourselves in ninth in the Constructors' Championship. But a very, very disappointing end to that race. It could have been far, far better there in the end and it would have meant more resource points as well in terms of the finish position compared to qualifying because we would have got a lot more a lot lot more uh, realistically resource points if we'd have pulled out that p10 from of course where we started in p17 but 
it's disappointment. However, we are still winning our rivalry with Esteban Gutierrez, which of course puts us in a good standing with the team. There's nothing much more, there's nothing more we can do realistically. The punctures are hurting us once again. Hopefully that can be sorted for the next Grand Prix. Obviously that is Monaco, low tyre wear realistically there. And uh, just for you guys, just a small teaser, the next Grand Prix is one of the best I have ever, ever recorded. So you have to stick around for the Monaco Grand Prix. It is an absolute stunner. But for now, if you have enjoyed this episode of F1 2016 Career Mode here at Spain, then feel free to hit the likes button. 100 likes once again would be massively appreciated. A thousand views on every single episode of this series so far is absolutely insane. Subscribe if you're new around here for more F1 2016 content in the future and comment if you enjoyed the video that much. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.